to another grilling video. We're gonna go ahead and do this one outside, but traditionally this is one that we always did in the house um, with my family. This is my dad's mom's recipe. It's something called peach dumplings. And I know what you're thinking, right? You're thinking, oh yeah, like a peach cobbler, a dessert. Nope, this was our main course meal and it's sweet and it's delicious and it's odd, but I would encourage you to try it. You will absolutely love this. Um, my mom years ago had made this for me. She wrote up this little book. It's all handwritten and it's uh, recipes um, with love from mom. 2007, so she gave it to me a Christmas of 2007. That's kind of cool. Um, and it says right in the recipes for peach dumpling from Grandma Latka. So it's kind of cool that it's you know from my, uh, my dad's mom and it's that recipe. Really pretty simple. Let's talk about the ingredients. We're gonna need a big pot of boiling water because we're gonna be boiling these dumplings. I've got that going on the side burner of the grill. We need peaches. You want nice ripe peaches. If you can get the ones where the stone comes out really easy, that's even better. But honestly, it's hard to go wrong with these either way. For our dumplings, we're just gonna use three and a half cups of flour, one tablespoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, powder, not soda. And we're just gonna go ahead and whisk that together. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. We're gonna start working on our wet ingredients. It's one and a quarter cups of cold water, two eggs beaten together. That's really it, it's that simple. You're definitely gonna want a plate of some flour here because as we, as we mix these up, we'll start with a wooden spoon, we might have to finish with our hands, and we're gonna form the dumpling around the peaches. They are gonna stick to our hands. I will have absolutely um, doughy hands when this is all said and done. So let me go ahead and get a plate of flour out here. It's not too windy, so it shouldn't blow all over the place, and we'll go ahead and get started. So now it's just a matter of cracking two eggs. Ooh, don't run away there, little guy. So I've taken my two eggs, I broke them in, I wanna use a cup and a quarter of cold water. Now, because we're outside and it's so darn warm here down here in South Florida, I did go ahead and just use the water dispenser in the fridge as a way to, uh, to do that. Okay, we're gonna just whisk this up. We wanna get those eggs whipped in there really good. Over here, yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. Now at this stage, we wanna go ahead and pour our wet ingredients into our flour. I'm not gonna use my whisk, that will make a terrible mess. And I'm just gonna gently mix this up. This will be a fairly, I don't know, a fairly damp dough. Not terribly damp, but a bit. Now, a couple of things. I already have, gosh, a gallon and a half or so of water um, going over in a pot here. We wanna bring that to a boil because we're gonna boil these. Now, I would certainly encourage you to use a wooden spoon if you're gonna do this, um, or your hands. The wooden spoon's a great way to start it because a whisk, this will all just get stuck in the middle of the tines and it'll make a, a mess. Be sure to scrape down the side. You wanna get all that flour off of there. scraping the bottom as well to make sure we're getting it all there as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands now and we're just gonna go ahead and make a little bit of a mess. Now, the technique that works really well here is you take a dollop of the dough, put it right into a little pile of flour that you already have in your hand that keeps it from sticking. I'm gonna grab a small peach because this is not a lot of dough here. I'm gonna push it right down into the wet part. I'm gonna turn it over and then form that dough around it and then pinch it together on this side and then begin patting it like a, you know, like you're packing a snowball if you're from north. Uh, let's see, if you're from down here in the south. I don't know, like you're packing a dough ball. <laughs> now we're only gonna cook two or three of these at a time and they take a little while to cook unless you have a really big pot. You don't want these touching one another otherwise they'll stick to each other in the pot. So again, letting that drape over then we're going to flip it over, pinch that together, and then pack it all the way around. And then really, you know, keep an eye out for it. If you have any splits in it, you've got to make sure that you, uh, you get those cleared out. Like there's a split, and I'm just pinching it together and then packing it around again. All right, another dollop here. A small peach. Yeah. 
Now, these won't look pretty. They're gonna be bumpy and lumpy as you cook them. That's just fine. That's the way they sort of look. All right, I think that's enough I've prepared here. I've made a little bit of a mess. I'll clean this up a bit, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our, um, at our water. We'll see if we're boiling, kind of show you how we drop these in. Now we're just gonna take our dumpling. This is the flat spot I was talking about right there. We just wanna make sure that that's all patched up. And then we are going to ever so gently pop it right into the water here. I'm gonna roll it off of there. And we're gonna scoot it around for just a moment. Put a second one in there. And you can see now it's already starting to get a little bit of that doughiness on there, which is good. We don't want them touching each other. We don't want them to stick together. And again, I'm packing this together where it might be a little thin. I'm gonna scoot these along a little bit just to get them to get that little bit formed on them there. A little doughy part, see? I can already see a little bit of peach coming through. That one might break loose on us. We'll see. All right, these are starting to float, which is good. Doesn't mean they're ready. It just means that they won't stick to each other as much. They're starting to get a little bit of that skin formed on them. So that one might end up coming loose in there. All right, we've got that ready to go. Let's cover this up. We're gonna go for about 20 minutes or so. Now, let me go ahead and clean this up. These are gonna cook for about 20 to 30 minutes, and you know they're done when a fork or a knife just slides in really, really easily. What you're looking for is a very, very soft peach. The nice thing is these are pretty soft already, so we want it to puncture the dough very easily and go through the peach. Let me clean this up and I'll show you the accoutrements, the sides that go with this, and they're pretty important. Melted butter, toasted breadcrumbs, and a little bit of sugar. Sounds odd, but I'm telling you, it's all the right stuff. All right, so while those are going, I'm just gonna go ahead and take one stick of butter here and drop it in a little pan so we can start having some melted butter. So put our one stick of butter in a little pan just to put it on the top shelf of the grill. We're gonna let that just sort of melt. And then we've got our uh, cast iron skillet and some plain breadcrumbs. You don't wanna use seasoned or Italian style, definitely use plain. So while those are finishing up, they probably have another five to eight minutes to go. I'm gonna put this over the flame on the grill and get this nice and warm. And then we're just gonna use our whisk and we're gonna keep moving around these breadcrumbs until they're toasted. You just want them slightly browned. I've got these two burners on over here. I'm just going to set this down in there, just to let that slowly start to melt the butter. All right, so these are looking pretty good. You can see one of these did split. That one's got a little crack in it, not too bad. But this one, it's kind of cracked wide open. That's all right, though. Let's just go ahead and scoop one of these up and see how tender we have it. Pretty close. We're going to let those go for maybe another five to six minutes. All right, we're just going to go ahead and put maybe a cup or so of breadcrumbs in there. And we're gonna start mixing them. You can just use a fork or a, a metal whisk, but you wanna keep them moving. They will toast quickly if you don't. You don't want a lot of butter in here. You're not trying to deep fry them. You just wanna keep it from sk sticking to the pan. Just keep moving those little guys around. Butter's starting to melt real nice. While it's doing its thing there. I'm just gonna roll all of these. These are coming out absolutely fork tender. We're just gonna go ahead and pull these out and gently pop them right into a bowl. We went ahead and finished toasting these and you can see the color of them. They are a nice dark brown. Now you look at this up close, you can see just how toasted those are. Just remember, they're gonna continue to toast in this hot skillet. So you wanna keep mixing them for a few minutes after you take them off the flame. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we prepare these and then I'll zoom in real close so you can kind of see what it looks like. So we start with our dumpling, and I just put it on a large plate here. And what I'm gonna do is put the fork in, I'm gonna try and cut right about down the middle. What I'm hoping to do is cut right along where the stone or the pit is, because it should be able to come out real easy, especially given as soft as that peach is. And I like to take mine and sort of flip it open like that. And sure enough, there's my seed come out really easy. All we're gonna do is cut this up into little bite-sized pieces. I try to cut them up so that the peaches stay with each piece of the dumpling. I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably not something you've seen before. Uh, the heritage of my grandparents are Bohemian, right? So think Eastern European. I think Bohemia 
is probably now sort of the Czechoslovakia area after World War One, but I've never heard of anyone else having these. I've never seen them anywhere else. When I was looking for the recipe, I had to go to, you know, my dad, and, and he said, you know, your mom has it. I went to my mom, who, who had written it down from my dad's mother, you know, probably, gosh, at this point, probably 50 years ago or so. No, not quite that far. Maybe 45 years ago, given my age and how old she was when I when um, how old I was when she passed away. I'll mix up our melted butter here, and we're just going to pour just a little bit over it, maybe a teaspoon or so. Might have been more like a tablespoon. Sorry. Said, as kids, we put sugar on. I'm going to do just a little bit here because I don't want to have all that much. I actually don't care for them. These peaches, as sweet as they are, don't need the help. And then a little scoop of the breadcrumbs. And you just want to sort of tap this here, and get a nice coating of breadcrumbs right over it. Almost looks like a light ground coffee. <laughs> to give you an idea on the texture, you can see they're, they're firm enough that you can put a fork in them and hold them up. Please do keep in mind these are really hot when they first come out. I'm just going to go ahead and Pick up a fork full of dumpling and peach. Hmm. It's just childhood memories. And if you think it needs a little bit more sweetener, by all means, just give it a little another pinch of sugar and go for it. It's the chewiness of the dumpling and the soft, warm, sweet peaches, especially if you get them good and ripe. Oh my gosh. And then the texture of the breadcrumbs just gives it a little bit of a, I don't know if I'd even say crunch, though it's crunchy compared to everything else. It just gives it a really neat texture. Now, you can cook these up, leave them out on the counter on a plate. They do heat up just fine in the microwave. They're not pretty. Once they set aside, they sort of dough sort of flattens out a little bit. They don't look pretty, but man, oh man, is that good. I hope you enjoyed this week's recipe, peach dumplings. And of course, like most things we do, we did it outside here on the grill. Uh, to me, it's childhood memories, and I would encourage you to give this thing a try. Please do, if you try it, Put a comment down below. I'd love to know what you guys think of it. I find these things absolutely phenomenal. I encourage you to give it a try. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week for another grilling video. Bye, y'all. Safe and happy grilling.